Next up from uh, the Great White North of Seattle, Washington is Mr. Andy Strickland from the uh, University of Washington in Seattle. Yeah, we got stairs on both sides, Andy. All right, and he's keeping with the Seattle theme. All right, very good. Andy Strickland, University of Washington. Bring up the chair. Bring up the chair. All right, go. <laughs> All right, so I gave a speech about six or eight months ago to a bunch of uh, chairmen and directors and people like that who are all concerned about um, healthcare costs and trying to control those costs in their own organizations. And one of the topics that came up, it was given to me, was uh, tax retention. Is there, a, is there a way for us to control the cost of archives? Um, so we're going to talk about a couple things. First of all, what are the costs most of an archive? Uh, what are the trends in the industry? Is, as at least what I think anyway. Um, we talked about a sample configuration and about what that looks like. And then UW Medicine, what was our approach to um, looking at, at uh, PACS image retention? So just talking about what's in a, on a PACS archive. First of all, uh, disk is cheap is, is the first thing that you hear when you talk about a PACS archive. So don't worry about keeping things forever because disk is cheap, it's getting cheaper every year. Just don't worry about it. We don't store things on disk, we store things on things like this, which is a big NAS. It's about seven feet tall, most of you have seen them in your data center. In the front, they look like that, and the back, look like this. And inside of there is a whole bunch of really complicated, expensive stuff, like cooling systems and power supplies and network controllers and fiber switches and operating systems. So it's a very complex piece of machinery, it's very expensive. And then on top of all the physical components comes typically a very expensive service maintenance agreement whereby the vendor keeps track of it online 24-7 and does all kinds of support activities for you. So it's a very expensive device to have and it goes in a place like this. So And there's a lot of costs that goes along with that. There's people like this that so have to support the thing. So the bottom line is, yeah, disk is cheap, but you don't really buy disk. You buy all of this stuff, right? There's a bunch of stuff that goes along with it. There's also things like RAID, uh, which says, okay, if I want to store a gigabyte of storage, I need to have like, you know, five gigabytes of actual raw storage because of all the reasons that you know, we have to be redundant and blah, blah, blah. So there's a bunch of stuff that goes along with this that people don't uh, recognize. A very typical model for a PAX would be to have a small short-term storage like the one on the left-hand side there, which is very high-speed disk, typically on a SAN or, or a small NAS. Uh, that you pay a lot of money for, but it's very, very you know, high performance. Maybe you keep a year, maybe you keep two years of archived images on that. And then beyond that, you have a full archive someplace else. Maybe that's in your data center, maybe it's a different data center. Typically got a NAS type device, like the one in the middle there. And everything you have will be in that, in that device. To retrieve images from there is a little bit slower than your, than your high speed device, uh, but you get the whole thing. And then finally, a second copy for disaster in the event that the first one gets uh, destroyed. You may want to put these things geographically dispersed in the event that you have a regional disaster like an earthquake or a big hurricane or something. And you may want to have a high-speed lease network between your local site and your first-tier archive if that's how you've got things configured. A setup like this can easily run for an organization our size, you know, a million dollars or more just for the components and the, and the, the expenses that are associated with those components. So it's not a small thing. Uh, so trending things in storage. So yeah, so trend, so the cost of storage is going down. There's a there's a little diagram here I pulled off the web, you know, showing the the cost going down from 11, I think it was 11 dollars a gigabyte down to whatever it is now. Um, and I went to EMC and asked about the same thing. They said, you know, it's impossible to answer the question of what has the drop in storage costs been over time because there's so many different ways of looking at it, and it's really a, a very good point. But, and also an example of that is, is this. You see, you've got, you've got spinning storage, spinning RAID, and then to the right, you've got solid state hard drives. Now, solid state hard drives are wonderful. Um, they're faster, they're cooler, uh, they're higher performance, they fail less often, but they're about 10 times the cost. So uh, disruptive technologies like that can really throw off your perception of what is the storage cost today. This is a picture uh, that is showing the size of our exams over time. This is actually uh, UW Medicine showing going from uh, 30 meg up to about 60 meg per exam uh, over a period of about, what is that, about seven years, I guess. So uh, almost doubling in size over that period of time. And this, so another component of this is disk is, is cheaper but also getting uh, more complex and therefore more expensive and also the size of the exams are starting to get much larger. Things like outside exams, things like uh, uh, 
uh, exam exchanges are also driving up our volumes. Okay, Andy. Am I out of time? You're out of time. <laughs> okay, so it's expensive. Don't, you know, don't just write it off as just as cheap. Don't worry about it. Thank you so much.